what's up everybody it's your boy q hicks and i'm back with another draft video on the rise of ole miss quarterback matt corral the heisman front runner is the most improved quarterback from a season ago and is quickly becoming qb1 of the 2022 draft class if this is your first time on the channel definitely hit that like and subscribe button now let's dive into it Matt Corral is a 6'1 quarterback out of Ventura, California. He is a part of the pipeline of QBs from California that are really bred for high-level Division I football and eventually the NFL. But it wasn't a smooth ride for Corral as some might think. It really took a journey to get where he is today. To start out his high school career, he attended Oaks Christian High School and he really made a name for himself early in his career because of his arm talent and by his sophomore year he was labeled a four-star prospect. He decided to commit to USC in 2016 to become the centerpiece of their 2018 recruiting class. And he would lead Oaks Christian to back-to-back -back Marmonte League championships in his sophomore and junior seasons, and he would finish his junior year with 3,025 passing yards and 29 total touchdowns. Everything was looking up for Corral until his football world was turned upside down throughout 2017. Early in the year, Matt would mysteriously transfer from the prestigious Oaks Christian, and many people at the time didn't know why. Corral recently confirmed that he got into a fight with hockey icon Wayne Gretzky's son. The two had prior beef, but the tension came to a head during a basketball game where things turned physical. Matt would transfer a few days later, posting on Twitter that the school was biased towards money, and that ultimately was the reason he transferred to Long Beach Poly before his senior year. Corral also stated in a recent interview that Wayne Gretzky and his son went through hoops to mess up his life. Not too long after that, USC started to question Corral's maturity and backed off the quarterback, which could be connected to Wayne Gretzky trying to mess up Corral's recruiting, but I can't confirm it. Corral decommitted from USC, cutting all ties with the program and committing to the Florida Gators. After all that transpired, he still had to go through his senior year, where he would total nearly 2,500 passing yards to go along with 36 total touchdowns earning U.S. Army All-American honors, but Corral's wild high school ride still would not be settled after the season. The coaching staff that recruited him at Florida would be replaced, and Matt did not feel comfortable staying committed with new people in charge. But he did love the SEC atmosphere, and he quickly committed and signed to Ole Miss with the potential to get playing time right away. Going into Oxford, Corral had a lot of hype, but during his first year, he only played in four games before taking a red shirt in 2018. In 2019, Corral was named the starting quarterback, but it was an inconsistent season to say the least. He had his moments throughout the year, winning freshman of the week early in the season versus Arkansas, and he had a season-high 300 total yards versus California. But other than that, Corral's freshman season failed to live up to expectations, and he would end up splitting time with John Rice Plumley and ended the season with 1,362 passing yards, six touchdowns, and three interceptions, only completing 59% of his passes. However, Corral's football roller coaster would take an upswing with the arrival of Lane Kiffin for the 2020 season. In the season opener versus Florida, he would wow with the then 395 yards and three touchdowns, and he would continue that success, leading Ole Miss's offense to 647 yards against Alabama. It was the most Nick Saban ever gave up. And even though the season was filled with bright spots, Corral had some abysmal games. One against Arkansas where he threw six interceptions, and another against LSU where he threw five. And looking back at those games, his decision making really left you scratching your head, and he lacked a lot of velocity on his throws. 11 of his 14 interceptions would be in those two games, but he ended the season with 3,337 yards and 29 touchdowns, and really showed he can make plays as a runner totaling 500 rushing yards. So he had a good season, but the interceptions and decision making had scouts wary on if he could be an NFL quarterback going into his Bradshirt Jr. season. But in 2021, Corral will put it all together. Seven games into the season, he has nearly 2,500 total yards, 24 total touchdowns, completing 68% of his passes while only throwing one interception. And he is looking like an All-American and is in a neck-and-neck -neck battle with Bryce Young for Heisman. Corral has taken big strides when it comes to his development, and he's the most improved quarterback I've seen from a season ago. He has way more zip on his passes this year, and he's showing off the accuracy, the arm strength, and the athleticism to be a franchise quarterback. 
but Scout still worry about his inconsistent footwork and not having to make a lot of progressions in this spread offense, so he tends to get locked onto one receiver to go along with him being undersized and him lacking quote unquote NFL measurables. But he has cleaned up his main preseason problems of turnovers and decision making. His meteoric rise in play style reminds me of Baker Mayfield at Oklahoma. They have a lot of the same qualities, especially with the gunslinger mentality and both being prone to turn the ball over in college. Both are 6'1 and have athleticism outside of the pocket, knack for extended plays, the leadership quality, and throwing receivers open. And both also don't have the strongest arms, but they have enough. Baker had more arm talent, especially on the deep ball, but Corral has shown strides throughout the season in that department, and he has gone up against SEC competition. And Baker was not predicted to be the number one pick or a first round pick before his senior season, but his moxie, his talent, and his Heisman helped seal his fate as the number one pick. Could we see the same happen for Matt Corral? I see him eventually going into the top 10 to Detroit, Atlanta, or the New York Giants, and Corral has the traits and toughness to be a starter from day one and looks to be the most NFL ready of the 2022 QB class. I just want to thank you guys for watching. If you got all the way to the end, I really rock with you. If this is your first time on the channel, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter and definitely let me know who you would like to see next. And we out. Peace.